Welcome back to the Van Cave, Mike. Yeah, it's it's you know it's good to be back here. Like I said, it's, it's always the highlight of the week whenever I get to come over here. So. You must have had a shitty week. You know, it's it's not. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's that's not too far off from from what's been happening. It, it, my job, it's it it's you deal with so much weirdness, and I, at least I know uh, I'm not going to be just entirely saddened by humanity when I get to visit with you guys. It's yeah. always fun. <laughs> hey man, congratulations on uh, on your your podcast on what's going on. I love that. Yeah, it, it's uh, I've gotten a little bit better response than what I initially thought. And so I'm I'm excited to kind of go forward with it. So it's looking pretty good. I had this conversation with Tim yeah. offline. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. I, just, I had a conversation with Tim offline about this one. That this is, um, you know, this the intent of this one was just to tell stories and hang out with my friends. You know, for when I'm gone and people want to reminisce and all. And then it started getting kind of popular, and I'm getting calls. And so then I'm I'm going, hey man, I got a lot of views on that one. What can I do to get more? It's like crack. <laughs> Yeah, I know whenever I was doing uh, YouTube uh, a, a lot more regularly, it was like, okay, this one's getting the views. That's, I just got to do that again and just kind of go have to go go after this and kind of get that. But then, you know, I kind of dropped off of it for a while and then I came back with this one. Now I think I'm just kind of having fun with it. So. I, I looked at, I was looking at yours and I went over a lot of the old videos and that's why you're getting all the stock likes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I honestly think uh, you, uh, his channel is Apple Cider Club. I'll link it at the mm -hmm. bottom. And um, it, it, I think you kind of landed in the middle of the algorithm or at the beginning of the algorithm mm -hmm. thing. That's when things are changing hands and it was getting weird because it, it really is. I've been playing with it a lot lately. And I don't know if you noticed the conversation we had <coughs> on, the, on one of the Van Cave posts on Facebook. We started, just a few of my buddies, mm -hmm. we started randomly replying with just strings of hot button political I saw that Things. I was I was gonna go in and jump in on that, but then I was like, no, I don't know, you know, if he's gonna take this as a joke or if it's. Oh yeah, gonna, it's yeah. it's all totally a, totally a joke, yeah. and you know, Russian collusion and Trump twenty twenty and Beto twenty twenty and Covington, and we were just throwing just I, I was yeah. I was googling because I don't watch the news, you know, I was looking for the the biggest stuff, and and it was funny. I've, I had friends at work that were looking at their Facebook and that post kept jumping and jumping and jumping. So <laughs> we're having our fun, but it, it looks great. Uh, the, uh, the Uranus thing was funny on so many levels. I just want to know how long it took you to get through that. It took, you know, there's, there are so many, there's at least uh, a good hour. I would say that I just cut out just to me, just kind of like, Oh, I can't Ugh. do this. I have to just take a breath and relax so I can say this. And just laughing and, and everything. It's yeah, I, I'm gonna link that video instead mm -hmm. of your channel because I want people to see that. Um, it's his his newer newer podcast. Uh, the the year in the year was the year was yeah. yeah. Uh, and Tim Kreitz just did some art for you that's gonna be fantastic. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited about it. He did mine too. Yeah. yeah, I know he had done yours and you told me that and I was like, okay, I'm gonna talk to because I talked to you guys about doing the theme. And then I went in and I was like, Tim, you know, I know you did this. And I was wondering if you could, you know, mock up some stuff for me, just kind of put together something. He's like, yeah, sure, I can do it. And then I saw it and I was like, this is absolutely what I had in mind for it. It's perfect. Well, I got to tell you, I got to tell you a couple of stories about the theme. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, so Mike, Mike asked me if I would you know, lay down a bass track or something. And, yeah, no problem. Just something cool. And uh, I sat down and I, I put a few little things down just in my practice. And then the band, we were together and we did a rehearsal and I said, hey, you know, we told Mike we would just, we would take a swing at this and we did. And we came up with that song, that little piece we did for you. We wrote it. We had the roots done in like five minutes mm -hmm. and then we changed because we wanted to give you, you know, some distinct pieces of music. We got it done and we're listening to it. And I told Tim, uh, man, that's, that sounds like a Satriani Yep, thing the little yep. finger pick part and then your friend said yeah that sounds like satriani and then over my shoulder when we were mixing it down brit says i don't know why but that reminds me of the buzzard from looney tunes R right yeah, yeah. yeah and he said that and so the next day mm -hmm. my wife and i were on a road trip in the car and she said what did you guys record i heard y'all talking about it and i put it up on the phone and she said that reminds me of the buzzard on looney tunes I'm really so. curious. I don't know what the deal is with the buzzard. <laughs> yeah, he he's this bi he's a big goofy yeah. kind of a you know bumbly character. And then I listened to it again, and it reminds me of uh, a song by Bella Fleck and the Fleck Tones called uh, "Hippos from Outer Space," mm -hmm. and it was on Northern Exposure and some other stuff. But 
But no, I, I'm loving it, man. That was that was pretty cool. And your audio is so clean. I thought, I bet there are a million chops in there where you were there laughing were, and had to take them out. And you can't hear them. There, there <laughs> were just so many of them, and it was it was every time I was like, uh, there was a line in there where I was I just said, "This is Uranus," and every time <laughs> I say it, it's just it's, just, it's like okay. So, take a minute say that again it's like okay take a minute say it again it's just over and over so <laughs> yeah it's like i've known you long enough i hear i'm hearing your voice going he's about to laugh or just got through laughing yeah, that's yeah. awesome you know I've, I've got a placard in the observatory it's a little laminated picture and then it's a picture of the planet uranus and it says no uranus jokes we've heard them all so but i there were plenty i hadn't heard in there so yeah. i was wrong but uh, so this is a, an episode idea I kind of stuck back and you're the perfect guy for, um, mainly because, uh, you're into weird stuff like me and you collect weird things. Mm -hmm. And this was a weird, small collection I came up with. There are more, I, I it's board games. I'm, uh, collect board games that we never play. Uh, we do play some poker and other stuff in here. And these are all games I didn't know about until I was an adult and I've picked them up over the years. And I thought we'd kind of run through them from the oldest to the newest. Yeah. Sound cool? Yeah. All right. So using our cool new multicam setup, this is uh, Mancala, the first game we'll talk about. I learned about this from a computer game. Uh, it was bundled in with puzzles. You know, it has chess and checkers and stuff. And, and uh, I was trying to improve my chess score at the time, and I kept getting hooked on this stupid game. Found out... It's actually really old. I want to try to run the games from the oldest to the newest. Yep. And you brought a I, game. I or brought. Two. It's more of a, like a, it's more of a drinking game kind of thing than than anything else. It, it's it's kind of designed. I'll, I'll explain it more later. Okay. On, well, we do. I have another game that is a game because it was it was it's a drinking game. Yep. We'll we'll get to that. But um, Mancala is the the cool thing about the all these games. Uh, well, I don't know about yours. I haven't seen it, but kids can play this. And the, the rules are simple. And again, they're they're pretty old. This one, um, I have seen different things. Mancala, the roots going back as far as, uh, I can't remember what I said, in Africa a long time ago in the BCs. Uh, it varies what you read, uh, Ethiopia, Africa, but it's a very old game. Definitely older than anything else we have. So what you have are uh, each of us, you know, two-person two, two mm -hmm. game. We each have six little holes. And I'm going to screw this all up because I don't play it much. But the idea is the gameplay goes this way. And this is your cup and this is my cup. And each of the holes starts with four marbles. And again, I'm not going to get super into the rules because I'm going to screw them up. I just want to give you an idea so you can see how these puzzle games work but like i'll start here this is where you start and it has four stones and the idea is you work in your circle and you drop one stone in each now because my last stone landed in my cup i get to go again mm -hmm. so that's that's why people typically start on the on the fourth hole and then you would go and you could make the same move and so forth and it keeps going so there's basically four rules and, yeah. and go go ahead take yeah. your take your four and then just that way we can be meet up or kind of start the board all right so let's say show the other way to score let's pretend we've been playing for a while and uh let's just say we're just setting up a mm -hmm. game here so it's my turn to go and this cup is empty and yours is full and if i end here i've just captured all of yours. Does that make sense? Yeah, a little, little. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So s same thing. If if you were playing, mm -hmm. and again, no, I'm just resetting, and you did yours, and you drop yours. One, two. Now you've captured because this cup is empty on your side, and mine's full. If you yeah. can end there with your turn, you get all of those. Okay. See what I mean? Yeah. And what happens if uh, you know we've been playing for a while? And, you know, the board is pretty well cleaned up. It eventually, and you'll, and you'll go around, like, if you get one that's full, you'll go one, two, and you'll drop here, here, and here. And, you know, you'll mm -hmm. go all the way around. Okay. So let's pretend we're ending the game. 
I'm not playing. I'm setting up. Yeah. So we're playing, and it looks like... I was just like going to say, you're playing this really quick. It's yeah, just, yeah. We're not yeah. playing. We're just setting up. Yeah. So we've been playing by the rules we just showed, mm -hmm. and uh, you would go... You would make this move, so that's one. It ends in your cup, so you get another turn. You would go here, and... Um, wait, I just screwed it up. Yeah, I did. I'm going to pretend start over. Mm -hmm. This is the la This is the way the board, the last move, you would move here. Because you've emptied your side, you capture all of these. Okay. Okay, so it's it's, it's a capture game, kind of like checkers. Look it up, guys. I'm just kind of giving you a thumbnail, and I'm horrible at explaining games, as you can see. But uh, a, a kid could learn this easily, and I will tell you, uh, Britt Parker, our drummer, can kill me at this game. Oh, really? Every time. Yeah, so... That's the basics of it. it. Looks pretty good. It looks like a pretty fun game, actually. So it, uh, I, it's kind of, uh, I've noticed, and it's because I'm just, I've been kind of looking for weird mm -hmm. games. Uh, a lot of woodcrafters are making these, yeah. and they are, they, some of the old ancient ones look like boats, and the newer ones are made out of all kinds of exotic woods, and they're really pretty. So now, whenever you pick up the, like, like say for for example, you know, you have you start with a four. Right. And then if you end up with, you know, five or, or six in there, do you pick up all six of them whenever you go in? Or are you yeah, limited yeah, to like the not, Yeah, you have to empty the cup. Okay. So if you're going to move, if this is what you had left, yeah. you would have to take them all and just drop. You start here and, and then drop here, 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 here until your turn's over. Okay. Same thing for me. I would have to go like that. Drop one in, in my cup mm -hmm. here, here, and here. Now the ones in the cup, that's that's capture. They're yeah, those are out of play, right? So if this were real, I would go one, two, up, and I would get another turn because it ended there. Yeah. So I might do that, and that's pretty much the game. And again, if you had, let's pretend you had three here, mm -hmm. and you went one, two three you would capture this one because sets empty and okay. you end there so you would capture those like so mm -hmm. and and uh, i think that's all the basic rules there's like there's only like four yeah and that's been called it's simple but in its simplicity it's kind of like checkers you can have people that are really good and people like me that suck at it so neat game you're yeah. shuffling rocks around in a board yeah this, this is pretty cool <laughs> i like this yeah yeah, I don't remember where this came from, uh, but you can get some really neat boards out there. Uh, some of the earlier, the old ancient ones, they're like carved into rock and stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, this is going to get weird because we're going to have to reset to get the camera angles, I think. So let's move on to the next oldest game. Yep. All right. All right, we're reset. Damn, this is going to be a lot of editing. <laughs> yeah, it, it only took us about an hour and a half to reset yeah. this whole thing, so... Yeah, we had to repaint, yeah. and uh, I had to get another base in here because the other one was glaring Spilt weird. Spilt my so drink all over. Yeah, the that floor. was. I had to mop it up. So, <laughs> so uh, this is shut the box, um, and I guess it was only new because I'm the last person in the entire world to ever hear of it. See, I don't know that I've heard of it. So this is okay, it, not the last person, but the second to last. Uh, it appealed to me because uh, I was reading an article that theorized that a lot of games that that we're familiar with, uh, uh, games kind of like Concentration and some of those similar games mm -hmm. were played with tiles because they could be played on the deck of a ship. Yeah. And this is one of those that was theorized that it was sailors. I have no idea, but somewhere around the 12th century. And I forget where this one came from, but it's a deluxe model. Uh, some of them are just the tiles and it's in a box, which is you have these these pop up yeah. and it would be just a little box just this part here and the object is to lay all these down and the, the box would shut hence it's called shut the box mm -hmm. all right so um i'll tell you what for camera's sake i'm going to turn it this way so it's pretty simple and uh it's it's actually very simple so I'll let you start. You just roll okay. the dice. Just roll the dice. Just roll the dice. And you're playing this one so everybody can see it. All right. So the object here, yours is a seven. I should have rolled that right camera. Cause, oh, no, the camera can't yeah, see it. Yeah, yeah, we okay, got yeah. it. We got it in there. So you rolled a seven. Yep. So you're going to turn down. Is that seven? Yeah. The, the, I think the best tactic is to use the biggest numbers. A total number of seven okay. on the tiles. Yeah. So you would flip the seven, and then you roll again. 
So the idea is, okay, so five, so you would turn on a five and just keep going until you turn down. And you can go one at a time. Everybody want, everybody take a turn or one person complete a game at a time. So four, four. yeah, and you just keep on rolling. All right, so you're at an eight. Yeah. There you go. And 12. You can still do 12, right? Um, you got a 10 and a two left, yeah. right? Yeah. So 10 and two? Or yeah, yeah, no, action, that's all you got left. All right. All right, so you rolled an eight. Now, is there anything left that could f that could make eight? No. No. So you're done. Okay. And your score would be what's left okay. up here. Yeah. So lowest score wins. That's how that goes. Very simple game. That is really simple, yeah. And this and Mencala, they're kind of cool games just to sit out at the table and mess with. Uh, it's actually kind of a cool game if you're just killing time to play solitaire, mm -hmm. to try to sh completely shut the box and get all of them down. Um, about the only rule we didn't mention is if there's no possibility of of uh, anything over six, you can just roll one die, okay. if that, if that yeah. makes sense. Uh, I've seen some of them go, I think, up to 12, but... That this, like I said, this is like the deluxe mm -hmm. <laughs> model, like you know, four player version. So yeah. that's shut the box. Pretty simple, cool game. And again, uh, if you're into woodcrafting, uh, Cricket Jack, I hope you're watching. Uh, it's another one of those games that can, and that's another reason I come up with these is I follow these guys that are woodcrafters like Cricket Jack. And they'll come up with a game. And that's the way I learned about the next game mm -hmm. is I was reading about, uh, this this guy that retired and he was crafting games like this and he crafted the board we're going to show next. Okay. So that shut the box. Kind of kind of a groovy game. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> and you can you can just sit here and roll dice yeah. and you know if you're if you're a person who can sit and play solitaire on your computer or whatever and you just kind of want to do something analog mm -hmm. you you can do this and and especially the little boxed ones are really cool. There's some that are just amazing workmanship yeah. that you can get. So shut the box. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. We're back. I got all the dancers paid. and uh, It was wild. Yeah, that was I mean, crazy. That was, was an after party. I, it wow. Was, I didn't know, you know, what was going on for, for a while there. That it was just, a lot of cocaine, though. It, it I, was. I, I don't. I, I didn't think. I was like, you know, this is maybe just a little bit too much cocaine. It, and in, in, in retrospect, uh, you know, we'd always heard about uh uh, doing cocaine off a of stripper's crack, I suggest yeah. we get a much smaller stripper next time. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, we're back. And what's what's this game? Uh, this one's called Nim. Uh, I guess. It, well, I was looking it up a little bit before the show. It looks like it's from the 16th century, but the uh, version I found out about it, or I learned about this from, was from the YouTube channel Scam School, which I don't know if you you've watched at all. No, I have not. It's one of my favorite channels. Scam school? Yeah, what right. they do is he basically will go to bars and scam people out of free drinks. So that's why I kind of say it's a drinking I game. I like this guy. Yeah. It's it's weird how much I watch of this and and like like uh, mixologist and cocktail chemistry and that type of thing. I don't drink. And so I watch a lot of it for some yeah. whatever reason. But there's a uh, there was a game in the 60s. It was a plastic board and the object of the game is to get the last of peace. So, so how old are the origins on this game? Because we did them in, in line. What did you say it was? Uh, 16th. Okay. So you have 12 pieces here, and the, the rules of the game basically say that you can take one, you can take two, or you can take three pieces okay. from the board. And, and all you want to do is just get this last piece here. So some people, like, like when you go to do drinking games and things like that, they'll put up uh, you know money or, or drinks on that last piece. Okay, got it. So you go first. So I can take one, two, or three one, pieces? One, two, or three pieces. Any? No, from starting from here. So okay. you have to go in order. Okay. And you take one, two, or three. I'm going to get screwed. I know this is coming. Oh, okay. See, I think you figured it out. I figured it out, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's math. Yeah, it's, it's math. <laughs> Stupid math. <laughs> and okay. all, all you're doing is... Uh, this is going to just spoil it for everybody. Right. But all you're doing is thinking about it in groups of four. Okay. So okay. because you can only take three, you have the other person go first, 
they the, the most they can do is three. You take one. Right, right. And so you just keep uh, those groups of four. That way you get at the end. That I love piece. it. That's cool. Yeah, it, that, a, that is neat. It's a fun little game. Um, you know, I, I went and did this, and I went to my sister, and I was like, this is, you know, we got to do this. And I was like, I'm so confident in this game, and I love this game so much. I'm putting money on it. Here's a $10 bill that I'm going to beat you. And she's like, oh, yeah, I want to go into that. And, <laughs> It was perfect. So <laughs> I get it. I, I love it. I love that. But this uh, this plastic board, I want to talk about that for just a second. Okay. From the 60s. Um, it was done with marbles, and it stood up. And it, the way that it was designed, it was basically just this little plastic computer where each piece that you would pull from the marble, it, was, it basically counted how many oh, were coming okay. through it. So whenever you would hit the button uh, to drop the next marble, and then it's like, okay, this is the end of the turn. You, you flip a, a switch over. I'm going to have to try and find a picture of it, and I'll try to okay. send it to you so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. But um, with this, the computer won, like, I mean, I think it's like 90 to, to 98% of the time, just if, as long as you didn't cheat. Okay. And it was just a weird thing that just this plastic piece was, you know, beating everybody. So Based on, yeah. Yeah, just based on. And, and the thing about it, w- w- here's where the game would be to me. Mm-hmm. Is how many times you could beat one person? Yeah, yeah. Because that if it, that hits your brain a certain way, you're not gonna catch on no, real fast, yeah. no matter how smart you are. Sometimes, <laughs> like I said, it, there were there were people that I you know I'll show this to and I'll kind of play them, and it's like okay, yeah, you go first, and it's like okay, they're going and they're going, and I think I I probably beat them around ten times, and then I was finally like, you know, I'm I'm done because they they start catching on to it. Yeah, so. that's that's cool. I love it. <laughs> now, I was. Uh, I was watching the videos, and if you go in and, and you can you can find them on YouTube and everything, yeah. but there is uh, one guy who talks about it, and he says you can go in and you can still win if you go first, but you have to sneak in a thirteenth piece. And oh, so you have to sleight of hand. Yeah, and, and then and you just have to go back to that group of four, so get it back to that. Okay, so <laughs> that's it. So yeah, yeah. I, I get it. Yeah, groups of four that makes. Yeah, there's yep. there's my my drinking game. That's you know, or just the uh, yeah yeah you get to, yeah I, I can and, and I would imagine. I mean, you'd have to change bars a lot, but if you put oh, yeah. two or three together, you know, mm-hmm. two or three games like that together, just you know, drink free the whole yeah, night. Drink yeah, free all night. <laughs> That'd be almost like uh, like being an attractive woman, I would guess. That's closest right. closest we can get, right? Closest we can get, yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> um, so we finished in the what? What you say? Uh, Origins 16th. or sixteenth yeah. centuries down to in the, in the in resurgence in the nineteen sixties. Yeah. All right, we're gonna go to um, what would be next? Twelfth century. No, no, I'm sorry. 1800s. I believe this one's Victorian. I'll have to look to make sure. Yep. And we're back. You know, this is this is day three now, and I'm just exhausted. I haven't slept. Yeah. Was, it, was it all the cocaine? It was. <laughs> <laughs> Call back. Yeah. There we go. All right. So we have. Well, I, I, real quick, I didn't mean to step it, on your toes there if you had had something that you had already prepared. So. No, no, I had nothing. I didn't yeah. know where I was going. And if I did, I don't remember it. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, we have Crokinole, and this is a game that originated in Canada in the 1800s. We just had to look it up. Yeah, 1876, 1876, right? Yeah, in Perth County. Yeah. Something like that. Um, I think it has Amish roots and a few other things. And uh, I'm pretty sure the this game and the next game, I'm pretty sure came about from people being snowed in in cabins with one other person and a lot of alcohol. And my board is made by uh, Heritage Woodworking in Canada. Mm-hmm. These are kind of expensive, and I learned about this one um, uh, through, it was a woodworking uh as a thread on Reddit about woodworking, and then uh, it actually made the Ocho on Reddit, the mm-hmm. subreddit for obscure sports, because there's a world championship of Crokinole. And is it really? Yeah. Th- there is. And so Tim Kreitz and I got to uh, – this is it, w- it was funny. It was just an online conversation. We started playing a, a, a web version of it, and then I ordered the board. Uh, these are expensive, but if you find a woodworker – that puts out a lot of these, they'll sell you blims that uh, they have a little problem and it's typically cosmetic. This one has some mill marks on it. 
uh, from, you know, it's a woodworking thing. I can't even see them in this light. You might be able to see it on the top view, but, uh, it is a two to four player game. I'm going to screw up the rules bad. And a lot of people take this very seriously. So my apologies in advance to true Crokinole fans, if I get this wrong, uh, so it's somewhere between curling and shuffleboard. I don't know. And I'm going to have to move to the other mic to show you how to play it. So we're going to do a quick reset and I'll move to the other side. Okay. So typically two player, you play across back and forth. So that's Mike over there and it's Matt over here. Oh, I, I gave a thumbs up and you can't even see it. Yeah. You got to get in the shot, man. It's so hard to see the viewfinder. So the object, and I'm going to go quick again, real Crokinole fans, don't hate me. You have 12 of these little discs, and these guys slide on this waxed board. Some of them have a powder on it like shuffleboard, and I've found some of the little pieces. Yeah, see, it's got a little wobble that way, but it's normal. You have to start somewhere touching this back line, and so uh, I'll go first just mm -hmm. for the sake of it. And the idea is try to get in the hole, and I didn't. Your first shot has to stop in the circle. So mine didn't stop in the circle, didn't go in the hole, so it's out. So now you try to shoot it. Okay. okay. So what Mike's made is a legal shot. He shot from the line, as far as I could see. If he, he didn't, we're pretending he did. Yeah. And he's he didn't hit the hole. It's in the ring, so it's illegal in the center now, ring. When you when you start from the line, is it on the line or behind the it's line? It's got to be just touching the line. Okay, yeah. And it has to be a flick. It can't be a, a push. Yep. They, they call it a flick or, or a thump. So now I have to do, I have to touch your piece with mine at okay. some point okay. in this shot, okay? Ideally, if I was really good, oops, see, didn't touch mm -hmm. it, so I lose that guy. So the board's open for you to try to hit the center again. Do I have to hit my? Nope, okay. nope, only mine. Okay, see, so you're awesome at this. So take <laughs> that one out and put it in a special place okay. away from the others. Yeah, yeah, don't just put it put it just off the oh. Yeah, that's good. All right, so my turn. I'm in a bad angle here. See? I suck at this. I'm normally much better. All right, so you shoot again. If I would stop sucking. Yeah. There we go. Uh okay, so I've made a legal shot, knocked your guy into the ditch, mm -hmm. so he's out of play, and it's your turn again. Now you gotta make contact with that one. I'm still trying to get in here, this is 20 points, this is 15, this is 10, this is five. I can shoot anywhere <laughs> in here in this quadrant. And you can bank. The, th the thing is if you bank and miss, you lose all the pieces that you touched. Okay. So if that makes sense. Again, we're, we're just kind of demoing here. So all right, so your roll. Now, do I have to hit both? I mean. You gotta hit one of them. I have to hit one of them? Just, just one. Very good shot. And these are little bumpers. It's kind of hard to see on the camera. Mm -hmm. They're just there to kind of like bumper pull just to be a pain in the butt. Yeah. See, I helped you score. Nice. So I can bank here. That was a legal bank. All right. And let's pretend the game's over just, just for the sake. It, mm -hmm. it could very much look like this because we could have all knocked these into the gutter. Yeah. So we go over, you have a 20 point piece over there that you got in the center. And then if it's touching the line, it goes to the lower scoring line. So you would get your 20 plus 15 plus two tens. And I would have uh, my two 15s. Yep. And you can tabulate a billion scores or you can go, okay, Mike, you won that game. So that's one point and we're going to play another game. Yep. And and there are plenty of other rules, but you got the basics. So that's a quick and dirty uh, Crokinole game. Yeah. There are a few other rules. It's not very complicated. Uh, another 20 minutes, we would have it down. You know, this is actually uh, a lot more fun than I was really expecting it to be. And, um, you know, with this one, you know, I remembered you getting into it. Mm -hmm. And I remember you getting the board, and I've seen it around here a couple of times, but I never really knew what it was or really, you know, what you did with it. But this is this is a fun game. Yeah, we used to leave it out, and uh, we would sit after rehearsals and just sit here and fling these stupid things back mm -hmm. and forth. It's one of those games. It's it's deceptively simple, and 
it uh, it's the it's uh, these games are to me the reason I like this kind type of game and what we've played is they're just objects they're pieces of wood or stones or discs or whatever that our own ingenuity makes into something interesting and something challenging yeah you know this is is you know they go hey this is too easy let's put bumpers in it you know and and it's just a fascinating way it's a fascinating way of looking at life Mm -hmm. it's uh this game, uh, it is addictive. Oh, you can play it with four people. I meant to say that. That's why it's in quadrants. Uh, my understanding, I've never done it. We've only had, I've never had four people at this table, but two or three. But uh, you sit across from each other and uh, it kind of like bridge, I believe it is. And you would make your shots from here. So white team playing this way, yeah, black okay, team yeah, playing yeah. this way. And then the shots just rotate. So there's just circles. the two colors, and you don't have. That's it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You would you would divide them. There's twelve tokens, twelve little pucks or whatever you call them, and you would divide them six, and then the four of you would just go around in a circle, and and so, you know, black would shoot here, mm-hmm. white would shoot, black would shoot, white would shoot, okay. and that's yeah, that's crokinole. <laughs> I like this. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, again, you can see the drinking roots of yep. it, and so. So cheers to our Canadian brothers. Yeah. All right. Cheers. <laughs> Here we are, day 47. Matt's abandoned me. And I don't know about this game, so I can't explain it. I've discovered these are not jawbreakers. Okay, Mike is, I've already had to tell him, just hold on, just hold yeah. on, dude, because this is a neat looking game. This is called Clask. This is our newest game because it was invented somewhere around 2015, 2016. Uh, I wish I could, I can, now I can't remember the man's name. The last episode we filmed in here was uh, with my band, and we talked about how all the cool music that I'm really into is coming out of Denmark. And this came out of Denmark, I believe. It is called Clask. And it's not really a strategy game. It's more of an air hockey sort of game. Played with uh, pieces with neo magnets in them. All right. The rules are simple. Uh, and you tell my board's kind of chewed up. It's been played quite a bit. And this is an extra piece. So I'm just going to move it out of the way. Okay. So here's how it's played. First of all, figure out the polarity of your piece and your your handle here so that it, okay? So it goes like that, and you do this. (laughs) I'm not kidding. (laughs) Somebody else made all this up. So this is like air hockey, Mm -hmm. all right? And over here is your scoring. And you can see really well that you go from zero to six points. So every time you score... You roll back. Let okay. me just say, I already love this game. Yeah, this is this is a cool game. All right. Um, I'm probably going to screw this up. There are four ways to make a point. If I manage to knock my ball over here into this hole, that's a point for me. Mm-hmm. would take a point. If I fall into my own hole, that's a point for you. Okay, I'm sorry. Point for me goes this way. Point for you goes that way. There we go. If my little dude falls over, and I can't set him up, which is rare, but if he falls over and I just can't, whatever happens, I can't get him back into play, that's a point for you. These annoying bastards, I don't even know the name of them. If you get two of them stuck to you or more, Mm -hmm. that's a point for the other guy. So that's part of the strategy yeah. and they go in these little circles and the gameplay starts in any corner and so you just grab it and serve it up like so it's kind of hard to play working around the microphones and we might be at a at a tilt too oh. uh, you only got one, oh but you're in there I'm so that's there, a point yeah. for me 
All right, then we can reset. If I had thought about it, I could start. have taken that off there. Yeah, we're... Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Oops. That's you again. Do you start now, or do we just alternate? Whoever whoever was scored against starts, so okay, I, would, yeah. I would start. I believe that's how it works. So... <laughs> right. So you get the idea of... Now, with something like this, do you get two points or is it just the one? Uh, uh, I guess it would go by whichever happens first. Yeah. I, I can't say for sure. There, There is an international championship for this, and I'm sure there's a rule on that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the cool thing about this, when the man invented it, uh, again, I, I feel horrible for remembering his name, but he marketed it to a brewery. And so yeah. it became immediately became a pub game, mm -hmm. and then with an international championship, and there's all kinds of game cons that that show guys playing this. It's simple. Um, I think this did come from Denmark. I'll have to look at the at the box. Uh, it's a blast. It, it's yeah, a stupid it's... game. I mean, if you really think about it, it it's it's kind of weird. And I'll, I'll tell you, I I bought this. Tim Kreitz was all into it. He's mm -hmm. oh, we got we got to try this, and we went on a hunting trip together. What better game for two guys stuck in a cabin at 20 degrees? And Tim got, uh, he came down with that flu that was going around. Oh, so he was just miserably sick yeah. our entire hunting trip, and uh, uh, we didn't get to play. So that's classic. <laughs> yeah, well, this isn't bad. I like it. It, it is cool. Yeah. It is cool. Uh, I don't remember what it cost. Uh, it's not as expensive as uh, the uh, Crokinole. Uh, Crokinole, you know, it's got to be flat. It's got to be smooth. Mm -hmm. It's a big playing field. And this, uh, it all fits in a box. You get a couple little extra parts. Like I said, there's an extra ball. And I was watching a, a, a video of some guys playing at a game con, and they're throwing these little things all over the place. So a uh, pretty simple game, interesting use of yeah. neo-magnets. Uh, you can have a blast. And again, if you got kids, you know, if you can keep from choking on the small parts, you're good to go. And, and, and some of my friends, too, so. <laughs> cool and that's it those yeah. are the weirdest games in my collection so far plus one plus plus one plus yeah one. well and that one man i'm gonna i'm gonna throw that down at work. okay nobody at yeah. the office can watch this <laughs> at least until you know, after it goes but yeah. fantastic and that's all i got my voice is kind of shot out dude my allergies are killing me everybody's like Oh my God! Are you showing symptoms of disease of your you know illness? I'm like, no, my allergies are crap right now. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> but um, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, check out Apple Cider Club. We're yep. the Van Cave on Facebook, and it's a public group. Join up, and you can follow us here. Also, uh, thevancave.com. On most devices, we'll take you to our audio-only feed if you just want to hear the audio portion. Sorry, audio users, we really screwed you on this one. I'm probably yeah, not even going to publish this on audio. I was audio. thinking about that earlier when, I was, when yeah. we were doing that, and I was like, oh, man, this is not translating to audio. Yeah, I, I meant to bring that up at the very beginning. I won't even publish this in audio, mm -hmm. so there will be a skipped episode. So but the video exclusive. Your video yeah. exclusive. See, I love the way you think, man. You guys are all artists and marketing yeah. geniuses, so cool. Mike, thank you. Yeah, thank Enjoyed you for it. having me. Yeah. Cheers, sir. And uh, we're just going to turn the cameras off and play this stupid game. I got to yeah, kick his yeah. ass. <laughs>